Continuing our series of lectures on SQL tuning and execution plans, today I'm going to talk about a fantastic 12C new feature, adaptive execution plans. There is uh, some prerequisite knowledge. I'm going to assume that everyone is familiar with techniques for generating and displaying execution plans and, of course, how to read an execution plan. The concept of an adaptive plan is that execution of a statement can start with one plan and, during execution, the statement can switch to another plan, which is a pretty amazing capability. The mechanism relies on embedding statistic collectors at critical points in the execution plan that will allow Oracle to compare the actual row counts being processed with the estimates of how many row count rows would be returned by each operation. If these counters cross certain thresholds, Oracle will switch to an alternative plan during execution that is better suited to reality. Now, why is this ever necessary? It's necessary because the cost-based optimizer was wrong in his estimates of cardinality. Never forget, SQL tuning is all about the cardinality. If the cardinality estimates are wrong, your queries will not perform well. Adaptive plans are a corrective measure that can get you out of trouble when the estimates are not good enough. How and when does the adaptive plan mechanism get used? It is enabled during the hard parse and implemented during execution. During parse, many plans are computed. The cost-based optimizer selects what it believes to be the best plan based on the information available at parse time. Nothing new so far. What is new is that if the cost-based optimizer realizes that the chosen plan could be inappropriate if the cardinality estimates are wrong, it will store alternative plans with the cursor and calculate exactly what cardinalities would make an alternative plan a better choice. Then, as the statement executes, if the embedded counters for actual cardinality cross those limits, it will switch plan. Doing this requires buffering of rows at the critical points, so that the switch can be made without any need for running the statement to completion, and also without any need to restart any operations. Two last points. The plans must have the same starting point, otherwise a switch would not be possible. Also, in the current release, only join method and parallel query distribution method can be adjusted dynamically. I think there may well be more changes possible in future releases, but these are pretty good already. Now, let's see it in action. I'm going to work in the Scott schema, where we can construct a fairly simple example that will show adaptive plans in action. First, I shall use explain plan to see what Oracle is going to do with a simple query. Explain plan 4 selects ename dename from emp natural join depth. That will have done a hard pause. So how is Oracle intending to execute that statement? This looks a reasonable plan. It's going to use a nested loop. It will scan emp, and as it scans emp, do index lookups into pk depth. Then an outer nested loop it will retrieve the columns for projection from the depth table. This nested index nested loop join looks reasonable because Oracle is assuming that the full scan of emp will return only one row. Never mind why we're making that assumption. This is an example of a cardinality estimate. Now, if emp returns only one row, we'll be doing one lookup into depth one table access for index row ID from the table. That's reasonable. But what if the estimates were wrong? What if there were, in fact, a million rows in EMP? That would mean a million index lookups into depth, which would be terrible. A vast number of single block reads. Almost certainly, an index nested loop join would not be optimal if the estimate of number of rows is wrong. 
The cost-based optimizer has realized that the decision is critically dependent on the accuracy of the estimates, and indeed it is telling us so down here. This is an adaptive plan. So Oracle has realized there's an alternative plan that would be more suitable if these estimates prove to be incorrect. It's pre-computed that plan and has embedded statistical counters into critical points in the plan to see if at any stage an operation returns a sufficient number of rows that the plan should be changed. Now I'm going to run the statement and we'll see what actually happens. So, disaster. 14 rows selected. Oracle expected one row. Oracle got 14. Note that I use the hint gather plan statistics to make sure that we have full information about what rows were returned at each stage in the plan. So, we got a serious cardinality error here. 14 rows instead of one. What actually happened? Let's take a look at the plan stored with the cursor. So let's start from table DBS explant or display cursor formats all stats last. What actually happened when I ran that statement? Hey, magic! Oracle switched from nested loop join to a hash join. Brilliant! Why? Because it inserted a counter into this first operation, the table access full of AMP. Note that both plans began with a full scan of AMP, expecting one row. But as it began that scan of AMP, it will have read one row, the expected row, it will have read one row, and then found, hey, there's another row, and then to its horror, realised there's a third row, and a fourth. So rather than proceeding immediately to an index lookup on the PK depth index, it started buffering a couple of rows. And eventually, it reached a point somewhere between 1 and 14, where the cost-based optimizer realized that a hash join based on table scans, multi-block reads, will be more efficient than the single block IOs of repeated index lookups. So during execution, the optimizer changed its mind and decided to do a hash join instead of a nested loop. If you are quite curious, you can in fact see what happened because there is a new column in the dollar sequel. Look at it now. Select SQL text is resolved adaptive plan from the dollar sequel for that particular SQL ID. And if we run this query, there's my SQL ID, there's the statement, and sure enough, is resolved adaptive plan is set to yes. So that's the proof that Oracle started with one plan and then switched on the fly to another. To conclude, is this really a solution? Well, yes it is, but it isn't the ideal solution. Adaptive plans are a technique for covering up mistakes. Probably mistakes made by you, the DBA. You didn't give the optimizer adequate statistics, so the optimizer then made a mistake. But this is certainly better than the other techniques often used in this sort of situation, such as hints or profiles. I hope everyone knows that there are many reasons why hints should be avoided wherever possible. But even profiles introduced with release 10, they aren't much better. If you have a thousand statements, you need a thousand profiles. And what are they doing? They're covering up mistakes. A 12C alternative to profiles is to use SQL directives. Uh, these are far superior because the directive applies to a table rather than to a statement. So one SQL directive might fix a thousand queries. But the real solution must be to get the cardinality estimates right in the first place. Quite possibly, you can do this with the new 12C facilities for automation of extended statistics and far superior algorithms for dynamic sampling. And these are topics which I want to talk about next time.